Hey mathematics learners, welcome to Distance Learning with Lee, where I make learning mathematics super easy. On today's video tutorial, guys, we are going to be tackling question 1.3. And question 1.3 basically tests our basic skills when it comes to um, data interpretation. Okay, so we're going to be interpreting this clustered bar graph that is given to us, right? And we're going to be using it to basically answer the given questions or the questions that are given to us. Okay, in the introductory video that I did for you guys, right? I basically called this bar graph a stacked bar graph. Okay, and that is basically incorrect. Okay, a stacked bar graph is not a clustered bar graph. Okay, so I made a mistake there. Okay, so I'm going to basically put the differences between the two. Okay, a clustered bar graph. There's a bar graph that basically looks like the one that we have here, right? When you just have your either horizontal or vertical bars, right? And you don't have bars that are stacked on top of, let's say, for example, this or each of these vertical bars, okay? So if you're dealing with a bar graph that looks in this way, where you just have your vertical bars or your horizontal bars just clustered close to each other, it's called a clustered bar graph, right? And if you have a bar graph that looks like the one that I have here on the right, right, where you basically have bars that are stacked on top of each other, then in that case, you're basically dealing with a stacked bar graph, okay? So you can't actually, a clustered bar graph is not a stacked bar graph, okay? So that was basically my mistake there. So I had to clarify that, okay? Before you get started with today's video tutorial, guys, please make sure that you are subscribed to the channel please make sure that you click on that notification bell so that you get notified every single time i upload a new video tutorial guys and also please don't forget to give this video tutorial a huge thumbs up because that really helps the channel grow and it helps the channel to reach more learners that want to better their mathematics models guys and if you really appreciate the content that i'm bringing to you guys and you appreciate the video tutorials and the in-depth explanation that i'm bringing to you guys right you can also support the channel by becoming a part of our maths game family right and also you can support the channel by just sharing the video tutorials with your friends okay so without any further ado guys let's get started with today's video tutorial <music> let's have a look at the information that is given to us here right question 1.3 says the graph below shows in cent per liter the prices of three types of fuel in Gauteng for the first three months of 2022 okay the heading for our clustered bar graph is Gauteng fuel prices for the first three months of 22 on our vertical axis also known as our y-axis we've got the cents per liter okay and on our horizontal axis also known as our x-axis we've got the three months of 2022 okay we're also given the key okay to just help us know what type of fuel we are dealing with right with the polka dots that is the diesel with the shaded area that the gray shaded area we are dealing with the lrp and with your vertical stripes we are dealing with the ulp okay we are told to note okay the lrp stands for lead replacement petrol and the ulp stands for unleaded petrol okay right so let's basically have a look at the question it says use the graph above to answer the questions that follow okay it says name the type of graph drawn above okay so i've so i've so i've already explained that this is actually a clustered okay bar graph because we see that our vertical bars are basically grouped together okay and we don't have additional bars on top of each of these vertical bars okay so in this case we are dealing with a clustered bar graph but let's say they gave you a bar graph that looked something like this okay in this case it would be a stacked bar graph okay why would it be a stacked bar graph okay because we notice that in this case we've got bars that are stacked on top of each other okay so on each of these 
bars we still have inside okay the bars that are stacked on top of each other so if we're dealing with that type of a scenario it would be a stack so it's very important that you are able to distinguish between the two okay stacked is not clustered okay right so question 1.1 1 .1, question 1.3.1 1 .1, the type of graph that is drawn above is a clustered bar graph or you can say a grouped bar graph okay because the bars are grouped together okay or you can say a multiple bar graph because you've got multiple vertical bars okay so whichever answer you give that's along these lines it will be marked correct okay so the answer for question 1.3.1 1 .1 is a clustered bar graph or you can say a triple bar graph or you can say a grouped bar graph or compound bar graph okay any of those answers would be marked correct. Okay, let's have a look at question 1.3.2. Identify the type of fuel that cost the most in February. Okay, so we are focusing our attention on the month February. Okay, and from the month of February, okay, which or what type of fuel cost? It cost it. Yeah. Okay. So what's what is the type? What is the fuel that costed the most? Okay. So in this case, the fuel that basically cost the most in February 2022, right? We can see here is the 95 unleaded petrol costed the most in February 2022 yes costed is a word so we're gonna write that down okay so the 95 unleaded petrol cost the most in february 2022 in question 1.3.3 the price of diesel in march 2022 okay was 1955.28 cents per liter write this price in rand per liter and you need to round off your answer to the nearest 50 cents okay so let's have a look at this right we are basically given the price of diesel in march 2022 as one nine five five cents per liter okay and you basically want to convert this price into rands per liter how are you going to do that okay for us to be able to convert cents to rands we basically need to um, determine how many cents do we have in one rand, okay? So I've actually done a similar video to this, okay? If you're a day one, a regular regular, right? You will know how to basically convert your cents to rands, okay? Because you would have watched this video tutorial, okay? But what we already know that, okay? For one rand, okay? Or one rand is actually equal to a hundred cents okay how do we get that why am i saying that one rand is equal to a hundred cents okay you basically need to ask yourself this question okay if you have how many 10 cents will you basically need to make one rand okay and you'll realize that you actually need one two three four five six seven eight nine ten ten cents right to make one rand okay so if you need 10 10 cents right okay it means that 10 times 10 10 10 cents right is equal to 100 cents okay so 10 times 10 cents okay is equal to 100 cents in other words for you to basically have one rand you need to have 10 10 cents okay so it's 10 times 10 all right okay so in this case that is basically how i got to one rand is equal to a hundred cents and we're going to be using now this equation right to help us now convert these cents per liter to rands per liter okay how are we going to convert the cents per liter to rands per liter remember guys if literally if you're a day one in this channel this is a breeze because you already know that for you to a better way to help you basically do your conversions is to write this okay as a fraction so you've got 1955 cents per liter so that per just means that you just divide that whole number 
by liter okay and then now we want to convert from the cents to your rent so you need to multiply by what you want you divide by what you have so what do we want we want to have our units in rent okay rent per liter so you're gonna multiply it by one rent the one okay one rent and you're gonna divide it by what you have we already have our units in cents okay so in this case you're just gonna divide by a hundred cents okay and then now what are we noticing what is happening the units for cents and the cents are cancelling and you'll literally be left with the units in rands per liter okay because those units didn't cancel so those are the units that we'll be left with okay so if you punch 195 or so if you punch 1955 multiplied by 1 over 100 into your calculator you'll find that you will get 19 rand and 55 per liter so if we're basically converting 1955 cents per liter to rands per liter right you'll basically have so 1955 cents per liter is the same as saying 19.55 rands per liter okay so we've basically converted our cents per liter to our rent per liter okay and now they also said that we need to basically round off our answer to the nearest 50 cents okay so to round off this value or this um price right in rents per liter to the nearest um 50 cents remember okay just going back to a few examples that we've, we we did together let's say for example you had a number like or price like 19 rand 557 five, okay in this case right when you're basically rounding off our cents we're going to basically look at our third digit after the comma and that third digit will basically tell us what the second digit is supposed to be okay so if we had to basically round off this value it would be 19.56 cents okay so in this case because our answer is just 19 rand and 55 cents right we can just assume that the third digit after the comma right it's just zero okay so in this case it just keeps this amount the way that it is okay so if we had to now round off this amount to the nearest 50 cents right you will basically have to round down okay and not up so our answer will be 19 rand and 50 per liter okay rounded off to the nearest 50 cents that is it guys and i'll see you guys on my next upload a distance learning with lee where i make learning mathematics super easy guys.